Okay, the next, the next method we're going to discuss is k-means clustering. Also a very useful tool for finding clusters in the data. And it works in any dimension, but to, in order to demonstrate it for you, uh, I'm going to do it in two dimensions because we can actually look at the clusters and see how well it's done. Um, so first what we're going to do is, we act, uh, yeah, we're going to actually make some fake data just for purposes of demonstration. So this is a typical incantation when you make fake data. So first of all, we set the seed, the random number seed, to some using some arbitrary number. 101 somehow is my arbitrary number. It comes up a lot. So I set the seed. Then I'm going to make a matrix of random normals, a two-column matrix. And I want 100 observations. So I make, I, I, I in, embedded inside the call to matrix, the data comes from R norm, and I'm going to make 100 times 2 because I want two columns, standard normals. Uh, and then this says there's 100 columns and, uh, sorry, 100 rows and two columns. Okay, so I generate the data. So at this point, it's just a cloud of Gaussians. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four clusters. So I'm going to generate some means, and I'm going to displace some of these Gaussians by shifting their means around and differently for each, you know, for four clusters. So the way I do that, I make another random normal matrix. In this case, I want eight because there's going to be four clusters, each with two means. Okay, so I'm generating the means here. And the, here the random normals have standard deviation four because I want these means to be shift around much more than the, the actual data did. And so it's going to be a four column matrix of means and, sorry, four rows and two columns. Okay, so that's how I get the means. And now I decide which of the rows get which means. So I'm going to pick a random sample from the numbers 1 to 4. I want 100 of them because I've got 100 rows. And replace equals true. So which is going to say which observation belongs to which cluster. So now I simply add the appropriate mean to the appropriate rows. So this is a, this is a kind of typical R vector operation that's nice and tricky and, and, and effective. So X mean is a four row matrix, but I'm indexing it with a hundred indices. So that'll produce a, a hundred row matrix with two columns, right? So it'll pick out the right, the right mean for each row. And I just add it to the original X. Okay, and now I make a plot, and there you have it. So there's a plot X, so it plots the first two coordinates, the, the only are two coordinates, and, and I give it the color, which is, I give it which, which is an, for each point is a number one to four, and it tells it which cluster it belongs to, and uh, and it just uses the colors one to four, which are black, uh, red, green, and blue. And so there, these are the data, and there we see the clusters that I've imposed. So we know the clusters, but now we're going to hand these data to hierarchical clustering and not tell it the, what the clusters are, and it's supposed to find them automatically. And we'll use the k-means algorithm. Okay, we're going to tell it there are four clusters here. Um, if we told it there were three clusters, it would probably find two of the clusters and, and then merge two of them together. Okay, so here we go. We call k-means, and we tell it four clusters, and we tell it to do 15 random starts. Random starts are cheap. If you remember, uh, k-means clustering starts with a random st start for where the clusters are. And, of course, if you pick a bad random start, it might find you a bad solution. Unlikely in this case, but that's what we do anyway. And we can print out the, the result, and it prints out a number of things for you. It prints out the cluster means. There's going to be four of them because there are four clusters. The cluster vector, it, it, that's the assignment of each point to the cluster that's, clusters that it found. And then there's some summaries of the cluster. The, so the within cluster sum of squares by cluster, there are four clusters. So that's the sum of squares within each cluster. That sum of squares deviations of each point around its cluster mean. And then, and this is perhaps a more interesting, the between sum of squares to the total sum of squares. So this is, in a sense, this is like the R squared for clustering. It's a percent of variance explained by the cluster means. And that's pretty high. So it suggests it's done a good job. And uh, then it tells us what the, the um, other components on the cluster object are. Okay, so now we're going to pl plot the data um, and there it is, and we've identified um, the clusters that it found. So we plot the data with big circles um, for each point, 
And the coloring year is not our original cluster. When we generated the data, we, 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 we made clusters. This is the, the, these are the cluster assignments found by the k-means clustering algorithm. So to see how well it did with, in terms of the original known clusters, we can include those points. That's why I made these circles a bit bigger. So I put the points inside. And well, what you see now is that we have a color mismatch. So we named, we named the clusters one to four in some order. The k-means clustering algorithm found four clusters and it named them one to four, but of course the ordering is arbitrary, so it picked a different order. So we can look at the clusters here and, and, and just reassign the colors, which is what I do in the next line. And now you see this is a more useful plot. So we see the outer circles are, are the k-means clustering cluster ID, and the inner points are our original cluster ID. And you can see the mismatches. So there's a black point, which actually belonged to this cluster from the original data, was assigned to the green cluster here. And here's a, a blue point that originally belonged to this cluster has been assigned to the black point. Quite reasonably, of course, because it's much closer to these, as it turned out, than, than not. So that's, that's k-means clustering for you and just some nice graphical techniques for, um, for, for having a look at the, at, at the results, if it's, especially if the data is in two-dimensional, that's easy to do.